In search of clarity on the policy, we spoke to the Scottish Government Minister responsible for independence, Jamie Hepburn. Now, there's been some confusion about what Hamza Yusuf's plan at the weekend means. Tell me, you're the independence minister, how would it work? Well, I can't see what the confusion would be, Colin. He laid out a very a simple and straightforward proposition, and that is the first line of our manifesto would read, vote SNP for Scotland to be an independent uh, country. That seems to me to be a, a rather clear right. and but straightforward beyond that, proposition. Beyond that, how would it work? How would it work in practice? We all know what that means, but how would it work in practice? Well, it would work in practice the same way it would work for anyone. We'd stand and contest every seat in Scotland, and we would look to win on the basis that anyone else would. We win a majority of seats, and then we have uh, secured the support of the people of Scotland to take forward the next part of the process, which is to engage with the UK government to put into practice what the people of Scotland have just voted for. So it's seats rather than votes this time, because under Nicola Sturgeon, a de facto referendum it was going to be a majority of votes. You're talking about a simple majority of seats. Yeah, that, what we're talking about is trying to make sure that we can force the, uh, the deadlock that exists due to the intransigence of the UK government. You know, let's bring it back to first principles. Let's remind ourselves, and you'll remember this, Colin, because you were there reporting on it, the SNP won the 2021 Scottish Parliament election. We have uh, secured a, a popular mandate through uh, the, that election, through the people of Scotland, to pursue independence, to have a referendum on independence. That's our preferred pathway. That's always been our preferred pathway. The UK government continues to hold to position where they won't agree to that. So it's incumbent on us to force the issue, and that's what we seek to do through this right. general election. So plan A is still a referendum, but if the Prime Minister, after the general election, continues to refuse, then you're just going to start independence negotiations. Is that right? Yeah, we will seek to engage with the UK government. Look, there's only so long that any government can hold out against... And they've the held out pretty government. strongly so far, because you're talking about a general election. You've won a majority of seats in the last three general elections, and they've completely ignored this. Well, let me finish the point. There's only so long, surely, any government can hold out against the popular will of the people of Scotland. But with the greatest respect, Colin, frankly, these are questions that should be put to the UK government and to unionist parties. They certainly overtly and publicly say they recognise the right of the people of Scotland to exercise their own determination to make a decision about the future of Scotland. They're the ones that are intransigent. They're the ones that are saying no. Now, we've set out a perfectly legitimate pathway. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, we sorry, let, 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 let me pause there, because if they're intransigent, why would they negotiate with you about independence? Sorry, let me finish the point, because these must be questions for the UK Government but there are also questions for you. You're here right now. So if they're going to be intransigent and they're not going to give you the powers to hold a referendum... Hang on. If they're going to be intransigent they're not going to give you the powers for a referendum, why on earth do you think they're going to negotiate with you? Sorry, Colin. Colin, this really gets to the nub of the issue. These have to be questions for the UK government. Now, if we win an election on the basis that we have stood on, then it's incumbent on them to engage. Now, if they continue to refuse to recognise the mandate we've secured, it should be up to them to answer what the pathway is. They say that they recognise the right of the people of Scotland to exercise their self-determination. Well, let's hear from them. How should it be? We've laid out a pathway. We know it's a legitimate pathway because it's been done before. It should be up to them to say, well, OK, they don't recognise, they don't accept what we've laid out. Well, what is the pathway? But you have to be able to tell people how you plan to deliver the policy of independence. Now, at the moment, you've got a mandate, you would say. It's a mandate you can't deliver. What on earth do you think you're going to get out of a general election? When, as I say, you've won the last three majority of the last three general elections in Scotland, they've completely ignored you. This is fantasy well, I, politics, I, isn't it? No, sorry, this is real politics. We're going to lay this out in our manifesto. We're determined, first of all, to win the election, to win that popular support, and then to take forward what we have said we would do. And we've said the first thing we'd seek to do uh, is engage with the UK government, but thereafter uh, set out three propositions that we would look to, to take forward. Uh, first of all, uh, start beginning a withdrawal from Westminster uh, a, a paper, a, a new partnership agreement with the rest of the UK, so that people understand the terms in which we want to move forward. We'd start to pull together an interim written constitution, the 
first line of which would say Scotland's an independent country in which the people are sovereign, somewhat different from the UK. Unwritten constitution which sets out the primacy of the sovereignty of uh, Parliament, and we'd also establish uh, a Brussels presence, a Scottish right. government envoy. But none, sure none of this is going to none, none of this is going to deliver a referendum, another independence referendum for you, is it? I mean, you're talking at the moment that if you don't get that independence referendum, then you just go straight into negotiations with the UK government on a majority of seats rather than a majority of votes. You're not even taking into account the sovereignty of the Scottish people here, are you? Because you're not going to have that if you've got a majority of seats rather than votes. You could, you could get a majority of seats for about a third of the vote. Sorry, it's well established that in a general election, if you win a majority of seats, then you have a mandate to pursue uh, your agenda. So Frank, you failed three times now because you won the government. last the majority of sorry, seats in the last three general elections. Sorry, you failed three times sorry, in a row. That, that's that's the, how the next UK government will presumably be formed, as it usually is. If you, you win the most seats, then you get the chance to form the government. If you win the most seats, you get the chance to take forward your agenda. That's what we're, we're proposing to do. I can't see what's so unusual. Well, the First Minister gone. also said on Saturday that you have to make independent the settled will of the Scottish people. 35% of the vote given you a majority of seats doesn't seem like the settled will, does it? Well, the election's not been held yet, Colin, and I'm very confident we'll garner many more votes than you've just laid out. I think we'll do rather well. well last time you got 37% of the votes. OK, you got 35 seats, but you only got 37% of the vote. That's nowhere near the settled will, is it? I'm confident we'll do very well at next year's election. Colin, we'll set out uh, a manifest with independence at its very heart and we will take that to the people and I think we'll secure their support. Tell me what the settled will looks like. Well, the settled will ultimately will be determined through the ballot box. You know, what we need to do, and I recognise as incumbent on us, is to get out there, is to engage with people, is to make the case, to make the case persuasively, and to get them onto the side of supporting independence. But that doesn't tell yeah, me what it looks like. That's... Does it look like 60%, which is a figure we've talked about in the past? Yeah, I think we need to try and demonstrate that we have uh, secured uh, that type of uh, position, uh, you know, there or thereabouts. So we're nowhere right near now, that. That elect... means you're nowhere near another so referendum, the next... then, is it? Oh, let me finish point, though. The next electoral contest is the UK general election. We're going to stand in terms that every other party will. They'll lay out their manifesto and they'll look to win the most seats. That's what we're going to do. And if we secure that, which I'm confident we will, we'll look to take for the agenda we've laid out in our manifesto. Jamie Hepburn, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight. Pleasure.